With Houdini 19.5, Karma is finally in beta and they realized light filters. So in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at the light filters, which finally allows you to have gobo lights in your scene. Let's go for it. So the first thing you wanna do is drop down a point light because currently for, as far as I could tell, the gobo lights only work on point lights, but if you manage to get it working in another light type, please drop a comment down below. But anyway, in the scene, drop down a light and make it a bit more intense to see what we're doing. And I'm gonna juggle around a bit into the right position. Okay, slightly overexposed, just slightly. Anyway, so the thing what I wanna do is in these kind of like naturalistic type of scenes, it's quite nice to add some gobo lights. So gobo lights are basically lights with a texture on it that you can create some dappled light. Like you can fake the illusion that light is coming through the trees and it allows for some nice kind of lighting, which I think really helps with giving your scenes less of a CG look. Admittedly, this scene still has quite a bit of a CG look because I don't have enough time to tweak it for too long. But anyway, this is something that could help you in your own scenes. So let's drop down a light filter library and we could just link it up to our point light and we can assign it straight away to the light we have. So you can either drag the point line in like this or you can drag it down from your scene graph. It's really important to keep an eye on your scene graph when you work in Solaris. But anyway, let's jump in. And here we have our new filters. So you can just have a look in the light filter. We got the barn door, which is kind of like, I mean, I probably don't do justice, but it's kind of like a cropping, just a light cropping tool, really. Then you have the filter gel, which kind of can colorize your lights. Then if you, you have the filter gobo, which allows for gobo lights. And then you have the filter projection. So with this, you can do quite intricate stuff like, like using material X noises and things for projection. So it kind of projects a texture from a light and it kind of gives you the UV so you can link up whatever you want afterwards, but it only works in CPU. So I'm not gonna to touch it on this because it's just too slow for my system. So yeah, let's just dump the gobo. And here we can select a texture. I downloaded a texture from textures.com so you can see it's just a black and white image. I edited it. You can you can just download these images from textures and then you just drop a white background. So this basically says there's light emitting from here and you, you give a black color overlay on the tree because that, the light doesn't come through the tree. So that's it, like super simple. Let me drag it in here. And let's see if this is working. If I restart my render now, you might be able to see something happening. All right, so very important. <laughs> Don't drag this light in from here. Drag it in from your scene graph because otherwise it won't show up. But you can see the tree like really nicely projected to that back plate, like this wall kind of thing, which really gives the illusion that, you know, this light is coming through the trees and we're like in a natural kind of environment. So there's a couple of things you can do with this. First of all, you can you can scale up the texture. So I can just copy this parameter because I want to keep it in the same resolution, in the same width and height, respectively. And I can bump this up to, for example, three. And now we get a way bigger projection, like a texture, basically a bigger, if you will. And you can repeat the texture as well. So as soon as it like fades out, it'll just repeat it, which is actually better to show when it's smaller. So here you can see the texture will just keep repeating, but I can just set it back to the call. I'm gonna set it on two. And another nice thing that you can do with it is you can blur it a bit. So this is quite a rigid kind of way to do it, but sometimes you want something like a bit more, yeah, like abstract, not like so defined. And you can now do this straight in the note. So that's actually a really nice addition. And as soon as I keep upping the blur, you can see now it's almost faded away, which is obviously not what you want, but here you can play and find the right kind of values for it. You can bump up the intensity, which I'm still currently actually figuring out what what is better to do, whether to bump up the intensity in the light or the intensity here. My current theory is that with this, you bump up the contrast mainly. But yeah, this is still a work in progress. You can either, I usually just leave it to one and then in the light, I can just up the intensity a bit if I want to. And that is the first filter I wanted to touch upon. And then the second one, if I disable this gobo, should be back to normal. There's the gel and this is colorizing the light. So what I can do is I can just give it 
any kind of color really. So let's do something really obvious like red. Now you can see our light is turning red. I'm not sure why this is super helpful because I think you can do this just in your color here as well. But I think because you add it on top of gobos, it allows you to stack effects a bit more. And if you use the projection, you can add some noises to it and that you can then multiply with gels. I think that's where it really comes in handy. But if you're just colorizing one light, it's, it might just be handier to do it in the color of the actual light. And then the last one is the barn door. And this one crops your light in a way. So you can basically just say like crop the left. And now you can see in the left side here, you see that, yeah, we're getting this cut in our light, which is actually quite a cool effect. I think you can make some really cool like graphical kind of effects with your lighting. Like this kind of stuff I actually quite into. It's like, I don't know, it's like an interesting way. Like, you know, having higher kind of like focal lengths can allow for some like graphic looks. But at the same time, using these barn doors, you can also create like really cool like graphic kind of looks. And lastly, you can stack the effects. So you can see this gel still working, but now we can reactivate our gobo as well. And that should just be stacked on all these lights effects. Those effects can just stack. So you can make some really cool effects like with all these combined. And then especially when you use the light projection. But again, I don't want to make you guys go to the hassle of waiting for the CPU to load up. So that's just the light filter library in a nutshell. If you want me to do a tutorial about the light projection, please leave a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.